First seen a while ago in an unearthed arcana, the College of Eloquence changed quite a bit when it finally showed up in Mystic Odysseys of Theros, and then again in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. As a huge bard player in the few times that I get to be a player, I have grown particularly fond of this type of bard, and I hope that comes across today in this episode. The College of Eloquence bard can use a well-reasoned, well-spoken argument as inspiration literally inspiring confidence with logical arguments. While the intellectual honesty of their words can certainly be called into question, the basic appeal of what they're saying cannot be. Mechanically, this blend of theatrical wordplay and logic is mainly represented through the third level feature, Silver Tongue. At third level, this gives you a minimum die result of 10 for all of your persuasion and deception checks. If you rolled a 2 while trying to convince the guards that there's a commotion across town, nope, it's a 10. The other third level subclass feature lets you use your bardic inspiration to lower a creature's saving throw with particularly persuasive arguments. Yes, for all you players out there that like to kill with words, or rather, use your words to help out while someone else does the bulk of the killing, a creature within 60 feet of you has to listen to your Wesley-style argument as you basically talk them down into having to take off whatever the bardic inspiration die rolls away from their saving throw. This may not seem like much, but a good bard is able to give an edge to their party in any way that they can. And if there's an ability that forces role-playing in a really unique way like this, it definitely gets praise from me. And for all you DMs out there, you should definitely be asking what it is your bard is saying that is making their opponent so vulnerable you are going to get some very mixed and always hilarious results. It's also a good way to create an organic, adversarial back and forth between your players and whatever villain you're throwing at them. At 6th level, you get Unfailing Inspiration, which essentially lets players keep the inspiration die if their roll still fails. This, in my opinion, adds a new level of utility to one's bardic inspiration and is a great way to make the bard of the party feel like what they're adding to the group has a bigger compound effect over time. At 6th level, you also get Universal Speech, which makes communication, even with bizarre creatures, a total breeze. As an action, you can choose one or more creatures within 60 feet of you, up to a number equal to your Charisma modifier, minimum of 1, and have them magically understand you for up to 1 hour. You'll need a long rest to use it again, or else you'll need to use a spell slot to do it again. I basically centered one of my own College of Eloquence bards around this feature, because I thought it would be cool to have a character that spoke for certain creatures and animals that lived in dungeons and other secluded areas that were just minding their own business. You know, I was just trying to convince people to stop hunting them. And it turns out a lot of creatures that hang out in dungeons and in secluded areas really don't need my help. And finally, the subclass capstone Infectious Inspiration is a neat way to gain extra inspiration and is overall a solid buff and debuff option. As for what type of race you should play to optimize this type of bard, I've had great luck playing the satyr, uh, mainly because of the charisma buff and those cool abilities. I'm looking at you, magic resistance. But I can also personally recommend the triton human variant and, of course, the half-elf. I say, of course, because the half-elf is commonly known as the best charisma uh, race. But again, if you want to just play whoever you want, if you want to, uh, any race is fine. Any of the new lineages seem cool. You know, I bet a Dampier would actually be very fun to play as with the College of Eloquence. I know a lot of people consider this to be an overpowered subclass build when fully realized, which, I don't know, my Eloquence bard always had trouble kind of getting himself out of uh, spats and stuff that he got himself into if it involved combat and other things. But if the consensus online seems to be that it's overpowered, I imagine that it definitely has the potential to be overpowered. So I will just go forward assuming that is indeed the case in some parties. I'm sure some of you out there have noticed that people who like to talk their way out of every situation much like they would with their Fallout character in that game tend to suffer from main character syndrome. Whether consciously or not, a lot of people that fancy themselves the face of the party end up taking a lot of the role-playing real estate that's available. This can mean taking up a lot of time with monologues and quips that they no doubt prepared in some capacity before the session began, you can just kind of tell. Or just in general, they do things that kind of establishes them as the central character in this very collaborative story. If they're also running around as a potentially overpowered character, this problem will most likely show up in different ways as well, such as turning the unrelenting weaponized power of their words back on their own adventuring party. 
We often speak ill of those who mindlessly put the party in combat and engage in unwanted murder hoboism, but I think this type of behavior is just as, well, it's just like that, but with more words. If you find yourself wondering if you are partaking in this type of behavior, when in doubt, just try to make yourself a support character in dialogue and in social encounters as well as combat. Let other people in the party try to speak, negotiate, and other stuff like that when, you know, it seems appropriate for the narrative. And then, since your character speaks so eloquently and stuff like that, come in and offer the bumbling half-orc a, well, I believe what my acquaintance means is actual, you know, assuming he doesn't smack you upside the head for that kind of behavior. Or if your wizard is describing something in a very esoteric way that other people in the audience might not understand, try to simplify it and make it a little bit more palatable for everyone to listen to. Basically put, there are ways for your character to shine and really get the most out of their abilities that doesn't involve being the only one that gets to talk. In DMs, if this kind of thing is getting out of hand at your table, it's easy to counter this in a diegetic way by generally keeping track of how many times the eloquence bard is caught in a lie or when big lies collapse in on themselves entirely. If the bard shamelessly lies to too many guards, it would make sense for people to be on high alert for someone who looked like this rather convincing fellow. Or if the bard convinces a whole section of the town to riot and that actually just ends up making the situation way worse for everyone, they might not be so receptive to your schemes next time. Also, general note, if you're going to play this type of character, pick up some word of the day cards, watch some video essays, listen to some fantasy audiobooks, whatever you can to expand your vocabulary. You should definitely be doing that. If you're going to be the face of the party, especially as a College of Eloquence bard, you need to speak in more than just simple sentences and recycled quotes from pieces of media that your party will almost certainly pick up on. I'm not saying you need to speak using words that no one can understand. Quite the opposite, rather. You need to speak in a way that everyone can understand you and that no one can disagree with you. I feel like this type of build is a dream character for a lot of people, and I'm sure if anything here sounded appealing to you, you're probably going to do this. And to add to that, I'm sure there are many groups that would benefit from having a player like this. And in general, I'm kind of glad that there's a subclass that recognizes the ultimate power of a well-made argument. Even if when that argument is held up to scrutiny, it's complete and total bullshit. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe because we put out new content like this every week. And if you're going to be building a College of Eloquence bard, I would love to hear about them down in the comments. My personal favorite College of Eloquence bard that I've ever made was Chech the Seder. And anyway, thanks again for watching. My name is Patrick Ferguson from Skull Splitter Dice. And until next time, farewell.